Creality's Falcon A1 is one of the more affordable fully enclosed desktop laser engravers on the market, competing on price with generic brands that basically just put a plastic box over a budget gantry laser, but the A1 packs a lot more engineering into its design. So what compromises were made to keep the price this low and is it still a good choice for your first laser? Let's dive in and I'll give you my honest opinion. First I'll unbox it and get everything assembled, then I'll take a closer look at the features and the engineering inside this enclosed design. After that I'll run a few tests to see what it can actually do and at the end I'll share my honest thoughts on whether it holds up and if it's a good choice for your first laser. First thing I notice is the packaging. Everything is properly protected with foam wrapping tightly around each part so nothing can move around during shipping. The machine itself comes basically fully assembled and Creality uses the enclosure as storage for all the accessories. Each one fitted nicely into custom cut foam. Inside there's a bag with the memory cards, cables, a few tools for maintenance and then the manual. Clear, well made and instructions for setup and maintenance in multiple languages. Next up, power supply. And then the power cable. And this is where something unusual shows up. The Falcon A1 actually ships with an air assist machine included. I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's usually an add-on that bumps the price up, but here it's a part of the package. You also get a hose for the exhaust or an external air purifier. It doesn't include the purifier itself, but the machine is ready for one. Or you can simply stick the hose out the window or a door to keep the workshop smoke free. At the bottom, carefully packed under more protective foam, are the consumables used for calibrating the built-in camera. Yes, it comes with a camera. And with that, the unboxing is done. With all this plexiglass, there's a lot of protective film to remove. Should be a treat. The joy was short-lived. Is this really right? I had to remove the handle completely just to get the protective film off. A bit strange, but quickly fixed and we're off again. The top panel is thankfully without any interruptions. As we saw during the unboxing, you can open both the front and top panel to access the work area. The camera is installed in the top lid and it even has a little privacy shutter, although I'm honestly not sure why you'd ever need to cover it up. Inside the enclosure you can see the motion mechanics, geared belts driven by two motors, one for the Y axis and one for the X axis. Smooth motion and plenty of stability. Both axes have limit switches, so you can't crash the machine and all the cables are routed neatly through a cable chain so nothing gets tangled even when the machine moves to its limits. The laser module is a 10 watt diode unit. At the back of the enclosure there's a motorized exhaust fan with a port out the back to connect the included hose. The working area is 381 by 305 mm and the bed is marked with guides for easier placement of your workpiece. Pretty good sized work area for this price. Now let's take a look at the connections. Since there's no built in interface or touchscreen, you only get a start button and an emergency stop button on the side here but that's enough to run jobs from the memory card. The connections are really well organized and that actually tells you something about the thought that went into the design of this machine. For example, this is the first time I've seen air assist tubing already routed inside the enclosure from the factory. All you need to do is connect a short hose from the air assist unit to the enclosure and you're ready to go. And the air assist is powered directly from the enclosure so the whole setup only needs one power cable. It's a simple thing but it makes a big difference. You also get a physical key for the machine, so if it's placed in a shared space you can restrict access. Flip on the power switch and the machine is ready to go, either controlled from a computer or by running G-code directly on the memory card. Once it boots up, the enclosure lights up with integrated LED lights and the safety interlock kicks in. If you open the top or front panel while it's running, the machine shuts down automatically. I first tried connecting it to my phone, but I don't think the A1 supports that, so I plugged it into my computer, downloaded the Falcon Design Space software and it connected immediately. The first thing the software wants you to do is fine tune the camera. It comes pre-calibrated from the factory, but a quick adjustment is recommended. Let me show you. First, place the base wood sheet in the center of the work area. It doesn't need to be precise. Open the camera page in the Falcon Design Space, click on calibration. Since the machine comes pre-calibrated, you can skip the first step and click next. Then run the framing move to check that the base will covers the entire engraving area. Nice to see the laser move for the first time. Everything looks really smooth. I almost forgot an important step when using this machine. Set the laser height. I used the included and very practical gouge. 
Now hit engrave. The machine will engrave a set of reference points used for fine-tuning the camera. When it's finished, click grab photo. This takes an image of the reference marks you just engraved. Then double-click each of the four corner points in the order they're labeled and hit complete. Time to test if it worked. I draw a simple cross on the test piece. Anywhere is fine. Then I take a new photo. Then draw a cross in the software exactly on top of the one on the image. Set the engraving parameters and hit engrave. And the result looks good. Maybe a couple of tenths of a millimeter off. Good enough for me right now. I'm eager to start testing materials. I'll run a few quick engravings on typical materials like craft paper, leather and wood using some designs I bought on Etsy. And I'll show a few useful design tips in the Falcon software as we go. Let's start with black craft paper. I really love how lasers look on this material. Great color combination. I've taken a photo of the work area so I can place the design exactly where I want it. And I'm going to do an image engraving. You can select the material here in the software and it automatically suggests parameters. Let's try it. Right away, I can tell something is wrong. I actually have to abort this. And yes, my suspicions were right. It was way too slow. It burned straight through the paper and left a permanent mark on the bed of the machine. Oh well, you haven't really broken in a new laser until something like this happens. Although, preferably not on the first run. It turns out the craft paper preset wasn't actually selected. After adjusting the settings much, much faster, I try again. This time it looks great. Crisp, clean, very detailed. Maybe a little too much power, but that's something you dial in with experimentation. Next up, leather. Here I'm doing both image engraving and a line cut to cut out the design. I tried a few different settings but I never went above 40% power and it still cut through easily. I might have gone a bit too fast on the image layer because you can see some faint scan lines. Slowing it down a bit and maybe lowering power should clean that up. And now the wood test. For this test I want to show you a useful tip when doing image engraving. Since the machine doesn't include a honeycomb bed I'm just lifting the wood on some blocks so I can cut all the way through. First I take a photo and place my design. The design will be the image engraving layer. Then I click trace image because I want to engrave an outline on top of the image to add detail and depth. The trace automatically appears as a new layer. Set it to line engraving. Next I want to cut out the design so I select the traced layer and press outline. Adjust the offset and generate it. Then I assign this outline to a dedicated cutting layer. Here are the settings I'm using. Image layer, 40% power, 5000 mm per minute. Line engraving layer, 40% power, 3000 mm per minute. Cut layer, 100% power, 600 mm per minute. Let's see how it performs. The image engraving comes out deep and dark. I could definitely run it faster and still get a good result. But honestly, the rich contrast make the longer wait worth it. Next it moves to the line engraving layer. As you can see, this is really fast. This part only took a little over a minute. I almost always add a line layer on top of an image engraving when I can. It adds so much more detail and definition. Then it finishes with the cutting pass. Also quite fast and I could probably push the speed even higher here. It cut cleanly with no issues. My overall impression is that this is a lot of machine for the money. The pros you get a well-designed enclosed machine with solid safety features and good smoke control, especially thanks to the included air assist and the internal tubing that's already routed for you. The build quality and precision are miles ahead of the generic enclosed lasers in this price range, and the machine works flawlessly in the Falcon Design Space software. There's really no need for any third-party tools unless you prefer using them. And then the cons. I do wish it had a little more power. If you plan to cut thicker or denser materials, you won't be doing it in one single pass. But at this price point, that's expected. I don't know any other machines in this range that offer much more. No wireless connection. Either the machine doesn't support wireless control from your phone, or I simply couldn't get it working. So you'll need to connect the computer or use the memory card. But overall, 
I'm impressed with what you get for around $500. It's a solid first laser engraver, easy to use, engineered with thought, and well built. If I get a discount code from Creality before publishing, I'll add that to the description. Thanks for watching, and feel free to check out my channel for more reviews and workshop projects.